This video is brought to you by Walrus Audio in the Aegis 5 State Overdrive. The Aegis is a massively versatile overdrive machine ready for any amp and pickup combination. Check out the Aegis and their other soundscaping devices at walrusaudio.com. <laughs> Hey, this is John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. So my favorite part of the PG gig is the rig rundowns. Uh, I've been doing it since 2013, and during that time, I've interviewed my heroes. I've been introduced to a lot of people I've never heard of. I learned a lot about what to do, and I've learned what not to do. And uh, it's been it's been a real honor to be part of this series. So right now. This is a video of my top 10 favorites. Uh, but before I give it to you, go ahead and take a minute and push subscribe below so you can be uh, kept apprised of all this great content we have coming your way. Okay, let's stop this start this top 10. My first one is Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein from The Misfits. It's the first rig rundown I ever did. I didn't know what to expect, um, but when Doyle came out shirtless, in full makeup and standing probably six inches taller than me. I mean, he is a huge guy. I'm pretty big, but he just dwarfed me. Um, and we did this interview and it was really sweet. He, uh, I asked him all the questions I thought I was supposed to ask him. And then after that, I got done. He said, what, you're done? Come on, I'm all the way, I got my makeup on, do more stuff. So uh, we asked more questions and it was just fascinating. Anyway, if you get a chance, watch it. it. It made me see I totally misunderstood the misfits. Uh, they're actually just these sweet guys that like to play dress up and turn every day into Halloween. Anyway, it's a great, it's a great rundown. So number two is Mike Stern. Um, Mike Stern, I think was the most kind of life affirming interview I've ever been part of. Uh, he had a a bad fall a few years ago. Um, he tripped over some garbage in the, in the streets of New York and really jacked up his his hands. Um, and doctors thought he might not ever play again. But that's the nature of the indomitable human spirit. He uh, found a way of applying wig glue to his hands to hold his pick and uh, and you hear him play today, and it just it sounds like Michael Stern. It sounds like Mike Stern. He's just, he's amazing. Anyway, watch this rig run down. It's great to hear him play. It's great to see his gear. But the stories are, to me, the most important part. So check it out. Next, Joe Bonamassa. Uh, Joe Bonamassa, I've been a fan of his forever, since he's a little kid. I mean, I'm older than him, so... so. I discovered him when he was a little kid, and I thought, God, this little kid really plays. And now he's, you know, he's kind of the elder statesman of blues. He's, uh, he's an incredible talent and a very gracious guy. And to stand in the Ryman in front of two Dumbles and two Bonamassa twins cranked is, uh, is an amazing experience. You could literally hear this stuff from outer space. Um, anyway, his playing was amazing, his gear was amazing, the stories are amazing. That's one of my top ten. Another one of my favorites is Tom Bukovac. Buk and I moved to Nashville around the same time, about 28 years ago. Uh, and we knew each other from touring a little bit, but he quickly got into the studio game. And unlike the rest of us, you know, we're in our 20s, I'm just trying to figure it out. And Book's already had it dialed in. I mean, he he's into the nuance of tone, which I don't even know if the rest of us even heard nuance. But Book just has a very defined ear. Anyway, not only did he have incredible talent, great player, but everything about his playing was just next level. And it's cool to see him now as this very established studio cat and have him take us through his rig. Check out the Book Rig Rundown. Another rig rundown you have to check out is Steve Warner. 
So Steve Warner is an official certified guitar player, an honor bestowed on him by Chet Atkins. Steve's somebody that I listen, you know, grew up listening to. He's an amazing talent, incredible songwriter, incredible singer, multiple Grammy winner, uh, and he does everything from from this straight ahead telly chicken picking stuff to this Chet Atkin esque uh, thumb picking stuff. Plays amazing pedal steel and laugh steel, great bass player, and has amazing stories. Steve is a bridge between old school Nashville and, and current Nashville. And you can't find a better guitar player. The dude is just amazing. So speaking of certified guitar players, not only do we have Steve Warner, but we have Tommy Emanuel's rig rundown. Tommy is one of the three remaining certified guitar players in the world, and uh, Tommy's just touched by the hand of God. I mean, you, to sit next to him during this rig rundown and just listen to him play is mind-blowing. I know it's just six strings in standard tuning, but what you hear is so much more. Uh, his timing, his tone, his taste, his touch, everything. He's just amazing, and he's one of the funniest human beings you'll ever see. Gracious, kind, wonderful person. Check out that rig rundown. So the Peter Frampton rundown is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, it was amazing. Went to his studio in Nashville, and when we walked in, we saw a a Marshall um, Marshall 412 with a head, and his uh, his three pickup black custom uh, that he's so famous for from Frampton Goes Alive on a stand, and there's a voice box. And like a overdrive pedal, maybe. I mean, that was it. That was the whole rig. And we were like, wow, this is going to be quick. And then Peter said, yeah, that's my rig. And then he says, ah, no, just kidding. And he opened up these double sliding garage doors to reveal this huge, just multiple refrigerator rack uh, Bradshaw rig with many marshals and stacks of amps his Phoenix uh, and an incredible alignment of uh, an incredible arsenal of, of vintage gear. The gear was incredible, but to me the stories were even more impressive. To hear how he got back this guitar, to hear him play not just electric but acoustic guitar, and it really made me see Peter Frampton. He was a big part of my youth. He was that was the Frampton comes alive. Everybody had that album. But to hear him play it in person, you see what a unique player he is. He has all these jazz leanings that, that you don't think would work in rock, but they, he owned the radio for a very long period of time during, during the um, late 70s and early 80s. And uh, his, his, you really get a flavor of what he plays like and how he gets that tone and how exacting he is about his 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 tone. So check out that rig rundown. Waddy Wachtell is another one of my favorite rundowns. When I was a kid, there was not MTV, and you'd only see music on TV every now and then for like a special concert or whatever, or you'd see concert footage in movies and things like that. But it wasn't. You know, music is pretty ubiquitous today with with you know with social media and all that stuff. But back in the days when there was only TV, you rarely saw it. But when you saw live music, it seems like Waddy Wachtell was everywhere. You'd see him with James Taylor, you'd see him with Linda Ronstadt, you'd see him with Stevie Nicks, you'd see him with Keith Richards. He was just this cool guy with this great, crazy, long, curly hair, playing a vintage uh, Les Paul or, or Strat, depending on the song. He was just the quintessential sideman. And as a kid, it really kind of formed me. I thought, wow, I want to do what that, what that guy's doing. I want to just play with everybody. So I've sort of tried to emulate that. Not with that degree of success, but uh, it's an inspiring story. And to hear how he got his 1960 Les Paul standard is an amazing story. So you've got to watch it just for that alone. Daniel Lenoir was an amazing rig rundown. Daniel Lenoir produced two of my top five albums. He's produced Chris Whitley's Living with the Law, and Emmylou Harris's Wrecking Ball. Plus, he, you know, U2 and all these other amazing albums. But 
what, so I knew him for his production, but to see his, to see him create music and see what a, what a creative source he is. I mean, he, uh, it, this rundown, rundown is really amazing because, um, for instance, the uh, SDD 3000 that he had, that he's running for his effects, was the same one he had for Wrecking Ball. So on the top of it, there was this white tape like he'd put on a board in, in a control room, in a mixing board, where you'd write, you know, hat, overheads, whatever. He had written on there, on this gear, every setting for every song on that Wrecking Ball album. So to have one of my favorite albums and see the gear that was on it and hear the gear, it was amazing. Also, as a pedal steel player, to see him play pedal steel unlike any steel player I've ever seen, um, in an unorthodox tuning and just, it's amazing. His gear was pretty simple, but what he did with it was amazing. It sounds like a Daniel Lenoir record. So check that out. Great video. The Larry Carlton video was a real thrill. Uh, I've been a lifelong fan of his. Uh, I mean, he's Mr. 335. He's probably done more sessions than anybody. Uh, so he's a sideman, an amazing artist, and then his own work is just incredible. But on top of that, he's the most unassuming, just normal, amazing guy you'd ever meet. We, we met him at his beautiful home outside of Nashville, right on the water, and uh, he has a studio there, and I was expecting him to have a ton of gear. He doesn't, has a limited amount of gear, but everything he has is a very specific gear, a very specific piece that are, that's basically a tool to give him what he needs. And to hear him say, oh yeah, I played this with Johnny Mitchell, oh, okay, this was with Steely Dan. You know, basically most of what he did on that 335 that we all know him for. Uh, anyway, it's, it was amazing to see him, and it really comes across in the video just what a gracious, wonderful talent he is. So there you go. That is my top ten favorites. Uh, let's meet back in, like, say, another five years and do another top ten, because we're going to keep pumping them out. So y'all stay safe, play on, love each other.